Why would anybody want to be in this market as it chops sideways and it's extremely boring and nothing really happens right now? And for this time frame, it is not the most exciting, I will tell you that. But for me, it is exciting. And we're going to talk about today of why I am bullish long term, not so much in, in, in the very, very near term, and uh, what I'm buying and why. So let's just jump into it because time is money. So this is what I bought. So there's been over time, we, we've talked about the different things in, in, in my portfolio, but these things evolve and they change. And that is just this, just the reality of the situation. But I just want to give everybody like a peek into what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. Now, some people don't want to buy alts. Some people don't want to buy Bitcoin. Some people don't want to buy anything. But for me, I kind of feel like, and this, is, this has happened to me back in 2018, 2019. And now it's happening again in, in this cycle where I just see that everything just kind of repeats and repeats. So why don't I take advantage of these low prices? Now, uh, there's a lot of people that say that we are heading much, much lower and they could be, they could be right, but uh, you never know. And this is what's happening. So as we can see in this little, little graph that I put together this morning, this is what I bought. And uh, what I want to do was I want to take a look at it was of course, what I buy every day. And then there's, there's a couple of ones that are an asterisk here. That's what's what I buy once a week. And in the blue is what I bought, kind of like, like the percentage uh, as it pertains to the different other cryptos that I, I bought. But in this uh, lime green shade, this is the percentage from its all-time high. So today, I bought equal amounts of Bitcoin and Ethereum. Now, a lot of people uh, will say, well, Rob, you should just buy Bitcoin only. Sure. Or some people should say, Rob, you should buy a little bit more Bitcoin than anything else. Sure. For me, I take a look at it, and it's all about dynamic DCAing. And if you don't know what this is, we've talked about this extensively. There's a video on it. I'll try to link in the description. But in all honesty, if you just go to danteachescrypto.com, it's 100% free. Everything that I do that I feel is important is going to help people to make some sort of uh, analysis of what is best for them. I put it in Dan Teaches Crypto. So uh, just check that out. Again, 100% free. So when we take a look at this, so today I bought, and these all happen without me thinking about it because I'm, I have problems sometimes with getting up and just going, oh, I'm going to buy this, 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 or I'm going to buy this specifically. Or I'm going to dump this lump amount. What I do is I just set it in, forget it. I put it on Coinbase. There is a, a DCA tab where you can buy it either daily, weekly, or monthly. You set an amount, boom, off it goes. And then for, and this isn't a, this isn't a, a, uh, uh, a nice affiliate promotion for Coinbase. I have no no affiliation with them. I don't have an affiliate link uh, for them. But I use them because so far I trust them. Do I trust them to leave everything on it? Absolutely not. And that's why once a week, which is usually Sunday, I transfer everything over to my ledger device or my Ella Pal and hopefully when I get my tangent, but the same thing. So it happens w without me really thinking about it. And then I sign up for this thing called Coinbase One where I do it for a year's time frame. I get a discount. It's like 19 bucks a month and it waives all the fees up to $10,000. So that's what I do. So Bitcoin, Ethereum, I bought Solana and Polygon, and that's like my, my next tier. So Bitcoin, Ethereum, I have the most conviction in. I believe they're going to do quite well in the next bull market. And I will tell you this, I didn't make all my revenue, all my gains, just by putting everything into Bitcoin. Uh, there are some, some altcoin plays, and some people may call those S coins, but uh, they do pretty good in the bull market. I'm going to show you exactly what I'm talking about. So Solana and Polygon are kind of like neck and neck. And then we've got Near on the next tier. I've got Cosmos. I like Cosmos. If, you're, if you don't follow a, a YouTuber by his name of Crypto Cito, he knows a lot about what's going on with Cosmos and, and what's happening. What I do like about Cosmos and Tendermint and everything they've done there is that, remember when Luna collapsed? Uh, it collapsed totally. And it was built on Cosmos as it's layer zero, not layer one or layer two, and nothing happened. There was no blip, no problems. Cosmos did pretty well. Now they're having a little bit of a shakeup and some things are, are happening over there. Go watch Crypto CISO, but I still think you could do pretty good. But again, if you take a look at the rules below me, uh, the first rule is it's all gone. Never invest more than you can afford to lose, but I think, hey, might do pretty well. Who knows? The next tier is Chainlink, and then on the very lowest tier, I bought a little Dogecoin today. And we actually talked about Dogecoin Actually, I haven't done a video in like three days. I've been very, very busy doing other stuff. But uh, and then, of course, our grandson was here, so I was taking care of him. And uh, so like, like the last three days, the last video I did was I talked about how Elon goes big in Dogecoin. I know some people love Dogecoin, some people hate it. But I 
lay it out and essentially just goes like this. Elon loves Dogecoin. And it doesn't matter what, what we think or what we believe. The masses pump that price so much. And who knows, it might become part of X or what was formerly known as Twitter. And then on top of that, there was a little piece that I'd like to, to share with everybody. But uh, just going back here, just so you know, this is what I bought today. And then I also do on a weekly basis Cardano because I have a boatload of it. Stacks, which is a layer two solution for like a smart contract functionality for Bitcoin. Algorand, Avalanche, and Polkadot. And I buy those sporadically. I got a bunch of those actually. So going back to this whole Dogecoin thing, and actually Solana, what you want to take a look at in this one is that the percentage from its all-time highs. You see that Bitcoin's not too far off. It's like 57% away from its all-time high. It dropped. Ethereum, 62% roughly. Yeah, 62% actually. Solana is 90% down from its all-time high. I think it got a bad shake with FTX and it's going on. I know some people say, but Rob, it's down all the time and it's awful and it's centralized and, and the wallets and look, yes, it's gone down. Has it gone down recently? Not that I have heard, because I know everybody likes to tell me how often it goes down, but not lately. And they're doing some pretty cool things in gaming and we'll get to that in a second. So um, yeah, I think it could do pretty decent. Maybe I'm wrong and that's just how it goes. Polygon layer two solution on Ethereum. They're doing quite well. We're going to build our project on it. So I like, I've been, I've been dollar cross that since 2022. So we'll see how it goes. Near Protocol did fantastically well. They did their token generation event with Sweatcoin, which is the number one app in the world. And they had the largest TGE globally. And it went off without a hitch. There was no downtime, no problems, no issues. And they're doing really great things with onboarding customers. Cosmos, like I talked about, Chainlink, I think, because everything needs an Oracle. And it's one of the few that's out there that actually has notoriety, but we'll see if it works out. And Dogecoin. So again, from its all-time highs, Polygon is looking at like almost 75%. Near is down massively. Cosmos, gosh, where are we at? Cosmos is down 79%. Wow. Chainlink is down 85%. Dogecoin, 89%. And then 90% for Cardano. So when you take a look at this, for me, I can't tell you what to do. I'm not your dad, I'm not a financial advisor, but sometimes you wanna balance risk with safety and what will be considered safety returns. For, for some people, Bitcoin is the most risky ass, asset they possibly have. For me, that is the safest, well, that's not true. The safest assets I have is, is real estate, quite honestly, but in investing for, I mean, I don't really deal too much with equities. But as far as investing in crypto, Bitcoin is, is, is the least volatile and, and, and one of the most volatile markets. But if we take a look at it, for me, I think that's a decent balance of risk versus reward. And who knows, all of these could get wiped out, but it's okay because I don't need everything to be a winner. I just need one or two to make it and off I go. And then lastly, what I wanna talk about before we get into uh, the news section is a DCA simulation. This is a, a much better upgrade than the uh, website I used to use at uh, DCA-CC. And this is Ben's website. He's having a sale. There's a link in the description. You get 10% off the first month. And this part right here, if you sign up, there's like a free tier. You can use this. And it's pretty cool. And what I like about this is like, well, I'm just going to show you something. So this is boring time, right? It's boring. Just boring. It's what it is. Boring, right? So I want to take the, the initial asset of Solana, just for example, right? Actually, it doesn't really matter. I'll just use Bitcoin. Let's use Bitcoin. And let's say I want to put in $100 per week, and I want to start on 2020, April 10th. I can't go. Actually, I can't go before that. Let me see. Let me start here. 2018, January, ba, ba, ba. January 1st. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna put in $100 per week. Okay, some people that's a lot, I, I get you, I, I trust me, I get you. Some people that's not that much, but whatever. Round numbers, we'll, we'll just go with that. So you can see down here, as far as like what you invested in Bitcoin, and it, for some reason this thing says lump sum Bitcoin, but I gotta get rid of that. But just ignore the lump sum Bitcoin, we're not putting in 20,400 right now. <laughs> we're just putting in 100 bucks a week. And you can see over here, if you put in 100 bucks a week, 2018, 19, 20, 20, so for four years, and we've talked about this at large, you've invested almost 12 grand. 
and you get back 83,000. That's if you sell at the very top. Good luck. And then of course over here, actually, top, top. You invested 15,000, 95,000. All right. So, you know, 6X, whatever it is. Then of course, if you held all the way down, you're not doing so hot. Congratulations, you've held for five years and didn't do, didn't do too much. That's why it's important to sell at some point if you want to. Again, whatever you want to do. What I like about Ben's is that I can do this, compare the assets. Let's compare this to <clears throat> Ripple, Cardano, Solana, Avalanche, Polkadot, Dogecoin, Matic, uh, Cosmos. And I want you to be very aware of what, which ones I'm picking. I'm picking the ones that I own. You know why I'm doing that? Because I'm super biased. A lot, of, a, lot of player, a lot of people won't say, oh, I'm just doing this for the random stuff of it. No, it's because they're biased. I'm super biased too. Chainlink, near. Let's throw in a Algorand and da, da, da. And just because I didn't pick yours or I invested in yours doesn't mean it sucks. That's just, that's what we have. So let's see. So now let me change the date. Because for some reason, I won't do it right. 2020. May. Ba, 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 ba. Ba, 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 ba. Let's say June 1st. Okay. And the reason why I had to pick, the reason why I had to go forward in time to June 1st, 2020 is because some of these didn't even exist. Solana didn't exist till May 1st, 2020. This is why. So let's take a look at how we would do. I mean, look, investing in Bitcoin is pretty good, right? But as we compare this against it, and it, let's be honest, it's risky. It's risky. The farther down you go in that rabbit hole, as far as market cap, the more you're likely to lose all your funds. Actually, you're more likely to lose your funds if you left it on FTX or Voyager or Celsius, but neither here nor there. So moving forward, how do we do here? Let's see. So again, ignore the lump sum Bitcoin. So if I invested here, let's go back. You can see that there's not really too much going on. You're investing $100 per week. And you can see that over time, your total, your total investment to as of today would be 13,000. But coming over here, you can see that nothing really happens until the almighty bull run. Let me take, let me take one of these off. Let's take out Algorand and Dot. Ah. Try that again. And let's take, let's put this May 1st. Now let's refresh this. Ah, shoot. Let me X this out. Let's compare it to, again, Cardano, Solana, Avalanche, Dogecoin, and Chainlink. Let's just go with that. Okay, so this will we'll clean it up just a little bit. How about that? So here, there we go. See how it says what you invested? So we started out back in May, 100 bucks a week, which is a lot, putting in all these different ones. You're not doing too hot for a while. Nothing's really happening. You're kind of flatlining, just like what we're doing right now, right? But then as things, as we start to do a little blip, look at this one. February 2021, which is roughly nine, 10 months after the last halving. You invested 4,000. And if you invested in a Dogecoin, 100 grand. Lump sum of Bitcoin, just putting it all in at the very beginning. You had a 58,000, pretty good. ADA, Solana, not too bad. And we take a look at here. Again, Dogecoin, jeez, doing three quarters of a million. And of course, you invested only 5,400. Solana, 138,000. ADA, 69,000, 27,000. And that's on 2021. That's just a very short amount of time. Again, in the four year cycles, this is looking pretty good. Of course, now we go down a little bit. Da -da -da. Let's go back to November. November 8th, the, the, top, the tippy top of everything. Now look how things, oh, how the turntables. <laughs> and we see that Doge is actually still doing great, 342,000, but look at Solana, 791,000. But again, you have to understand, you were accumulating some massive amounts 
on low prices when Solana was absolutely nothing. Nothing, because it just came out of May. Who times those perfectly? Very few people, usually insiders, usually VCs actually. But if we can see over here, we can see over time that actually Solana and Dogecoin did pretty well. And one thing that, that always impressed me about Dogecoin, and I talked about this in the video, was that we took a look, because Dogecoin came around in 2014. And you can see that over the time frame, and it's been a long time frame, 2014, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, nine years, Dogecoin has been in the top 40 all of those years, as much as people make fun of it. So I took a look at that. I'm like, holy smokes, maybe there's something to it. Maybe if uh, Elon gets to it. Now, I'm not telling you to, to go and buy it. I'm just telling you that's just what we see. And we can see that through, you know, Ben's site here. and Take a look at just dollar cost averaging, how things go. So let me just think about that in the comments section. This will be a little bit uh, controversial, but hey. Don't get mad at me, get mad at the data. And that's all we got. And then lastly, uh, before we move on, just so you know, all the stuff I'm gonna talk about today, it's all on this site. So the thing that I was saying, like uh, uh, the dynamic dollar cost averaging video, all my screw up and lessons are right there. Here's, the, here's that dynamic DCA. And another one you're probably going to want to watch is, you know, when I'm planning to sell 80% of my crypto with these specific indicators and so on and so forth. Okay, so that takes care of that. Let's talk about some bullish stuff. Because for some reason, people say I'm very bearish. I understand why, because I sound very bearish. But you have to understand, right now, I don't think we have a blow off top. I think we're going in the right direction. I think that we have a lot of rocky road to come up. And especially if we hit some form of a recession, whether it be a rolling recession or jobless growth or whatever else is, is happening around that bend. But I see the light at the end of the tunnel and it all starts with the Bitcoin halving coming up in April, 2024. So it's not just me that knows it. It's people like the whales that are starting to accumulate. It's amazing to me that we've been stuck around 30,000, like it seems like forever. So this is from CryptoQuants and they came out and said there was three data points I took a look at. Exchange well ratio, exchange inflow coin days destroyed, and unspent transaction output. Concluded that Bitcoin whales, I'm not gonna say they're smart money, I'm just gonna say they're big money. Those are the ones that hold between 1,000 and 10,000 Bitcoin, have been accumulating more Bitcoin this month at price levels of around 30,000. Usually those guys don't usually accumulate too much when they see something negative coming massively in. So if they're accumulating, not a bad time to accumulate. So. There's some bullish news for everybody. I like that. Also, um, some of the traditional finance people are getting into the game. As Bitcoin futures, they hit a yearly high. And it states here, despite dwindling volumes across crypto trading venues, that's true. We've seen a little bit of a reduction in volume. CME Group clocked its highest monthly volumes of the year in July. Volumes from July top its previous high in April. 53 billion with one day left in the month. In April, the firm saw 53.06 billion worth of contracts trade hands. That's a lot of Bitcoin futures. So I need someone much smarter than me to explain to me why these Bitcoin futures and these futures ETF are not wrought with manipulation and no problems, but yet we can't get a spot Bitcoin ETF. So I, there's a case right now going on against the SEC. And I still don't understand what the, I, I understand what the difference is with the spot ETF. You have to hold the underlying asset, get it. In the futures, you don't. But it's still like a bunch of paper Bitcoin. And essentially, you're manipulating, you can manipulate the market, I think, a little bit easier in the futures market. I think I could be wrong, but that's all we got. Which leads me to the, my bearish story of the day, as everybody groans, but this is true. Gensler raises concerns about fraud and manipulation when asked about the Bitcoin ETFs. Now look, I don't think it's gonna get approved. I know I'm very, very, very much in the minority, but this is what we got. Gary Gensler expressed skepticism about the crypto market when asked about pending apps for a spot ETF. He made clear he didn't make a direct statement to the full five member commission could consider the recent wave of filings. There's, there's multiplude. I'm gonna to talk to you about those deadlines which are gonna come up. 
But Gensler again raised concerns about general fraud and manipulation in the crypto industry when asked for his thoughts about the ETF applications. And he, he's like a recording. There's a lot of non-compliance in this field. The platforms themselves, where trading is occurring of various crypto tokens, though some of it comes under the securities laws, currently they're not necessarily compliant with those time-tested protections against fraud and manipulation. And again, all of the people that have applied for the spot Bitcoin ETF, they have used Coinbase as their custody partner. The SEC is suing Coinbase, although it is a different company under the umbrella of Coinbase, the publicly traded company. I just feel like Gary is going to use this excuse to push the members and say, no, we're going to not approve it. Now, I hope I'm wrong, but I kind of see that's how it's working out moving forward. Let me know what you think about that in the comments section. Just as a reminder, this, uh, this is something to watch out for. Here's all of the deadlines for all of these ETFs that have been filed. So ARK, 21 shares Bitcoin ETF. Uh, they've already missed their, not they've already missed, the, the deadline's already passed. So you have like within 45 days, which is weird to me about you know, the SEC, like, well, we got a first deadline, a second deadline, a third deadline, and a final deadline. It's like telling your kids to go to bed. Okay, you can go to bed at nine o'clock, okay? Or maybe 9.30 or 10 or 10.30, but the final one's 11. I don't know. I don't understand the process. That's really what it comes down to. But anyhow, ARC 21 shares, the first deadline, they've already blown through that. Second one's gonna come up in August. iShares, which is the company, which is BlackRock, which everybody believes is going to be approved. Actually, all of them. iShares, Bitwise, VanEck, Wisdom Tree, Invesco, Wise Origin, and Valkyrie. They're all in their first deadline in September. We got about a month. If it doesn't happen in a month and they blow through that, that first deadline, we got problems. But maybe they approve it, but it's just odd that they go to the first, second, third. The final deadline for all these guys, it's March 15th, 2024, which would be quite interesting how that kind of lines up when they could say, they could push, 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 push to the final deadline and then say, no, ha ha. And then guess what happens in the next month? Bitcoin halving. Great. I don't really care if they deny it or not. Because the whole thing is all of these TradFi companies have come out and go, we want Bitcoin. We've got a lot of people who have a lot of money who want Bitcoin. Give us that Bitcoin spot ETF. People are going to understand that. They're going to look at that and go, there's something to this Bitcoin, which we didn't understand before. But these smart people do. The cat's out of the bag. And then people get into it. And then you're going to have the narrative of the Bitcoin halving which let me just pop forward. Where'd I go? That's not it. Ba, 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 ba. Oh, <laughs> sorry. Like this one, this was on uh, MSNBC and they just out of the blue just started talking about Bitcoin having, it's about two minutes long. I'm not gonna play it. I'll link in the description. You can, you can watch it, but we're gonna keep having these types of narratives come out where this Bitcoin halving is going to come up. And people are going to talk about, oh, the supply is going to be even more limited because the halving happens every four years. And of course, because of supply and demand, the price will go up. Now, some people don't believe in that. Bob Lucas, who I like his videos, and maybe we see the all-time high in uh, 2024. I'm not for sure. But he's one of those guys that does not believe that the Bitcoin halving has anything to do with the price of Bitcoin going up. And he's got some pretty fantastic reasons. I, will, I have a link, you can watch Bob, what he talks about. But it doesn't matter, like I said, because I just think that we're going to get this, people are gonna talk about it, and off we go. Anyhow, on that note, here's some good news. Even though the SEC talks a big game and everybody respects them and think they're unbeatable, well, remember Mark Cuban beat them when they accused him of insider trading. And the SEC, this little, uh, little snippet here, had no, almost no impact on Ripple's talks with central banks. This is from Ripple's execs. Ripple's long legal saga with the U.S. Securities and Exchange Committee and SEC had almost no impact. Fir firm's vice president of central bank engagement told Coindesk. James Wallace said his decision that Ripple's sale of XRP did not constitute investment contracts was a major victory, not just for Ripple, but everybody. And he says, we've had no countries say we don't want to talk to you because of it. I think people see through that shroud and they can say, you know what? Even though the SEC came down hard, they still lost that case, even though they went on TV and said that they won. In all honesty, they did lose 
And I think there's some more losses coming about. So that is good news. I can, I can definitely say that. Now let's shift gears a little bit and talk about the metaverse, NFT, and gaming. I know we, we think about this sector as dead, but I think it's going to be the next big narrative moving forward. So just saw this on Decrypt. British Museum will enter the metaverse via the sandbox. The sandbox is a funny thing. Because we had talked about how like digital land was going to be the next big thing. And then all of a sudden it just be kind of just dried up and nobody really goes to it. Now all of a sudden you've got uh, Adidas and Snoop Dogg and all these different people. Well, that's, that's a little bit older coming into it. Now you've got the British Museum coming in. Here's what we have. So Sandbox, Ethereum-based metaverse game, they're going to create a range of NFT digital collectibles. According to a press, it's going to reflect the breadth and depth of the British Museum's collections offering new immersive experiences, putting alongside modern cultural icons like Snoop Dogg, McDonald's, Adidas, and Gucci. This is a great opportunity for the Sandbox players, regardless of where they are, to learn about the amazing wealth of human history, art, and culture that the British Museum has to offer. I know some people are going, who cares? That's very boring. I got you. I mean, I'm old, so I like to go to museums. That's pretty, that's kind of fun for me. But, uh, it doesn't matter where we talk about just the advancements and things that are happening as far as like with NFTs, it really comes down to digital property. And there's this video I'd like you guys to watch. This is me and Yatsu. He is the, uh, he's the co-founder of Animoca Brands. Got over 400 different investments, you know, big stuff like OpenSea and Sandbox and Axie and stuff like that. And what he talks about as far as digital property, that is the next, and he, he makes Web3 the way that he explains it, I can't do a good job, is just something to watch to know where we're going. And one of his quotes, or one of the, he quotes actually George Washington, which is pretty good. And he said, freedom and property rights are inseparable. You can't have one without the other. And when he talks about the property rights that you have for the physical items that you own, your house, your car, clothes in your back, shoes, makes a lot of sense as we talk about the digital properties that we don't have control of, our data, our collectibles, things that we use in games, things we use online. So I see where things are going. And it's just interesting that they're doing, you know, all the different things that Animoca is doing on top of uh, this thing called Open Campus. And we talked about this. Just so you know, if you're a teacher, Open Campus is launching a 10 million grant fund uh, powered by their token at EDU. So if you're a teacher and you're looking to uh, educate, uh, this is for you, opencampus.xyz. Or anybody that you know that uh, has something to say and something to uh, teach, they're funding this process right now. I should apply. But i got too much going on. So, uh, again, if you want to find this video or this, this website and everything else on the website, if you go to gaming, it's like the first video. Yeah, first video there. And then there's Animoca Brands, Open Camps, it's in uh, the TED Talk. So then there's a good one with Crypto Stash. You want to check that one out. So that's what we have. And then lastly, just to talk about, because this is going kind of long, sorry. Um, gaming. So we talk about NFT and property rights. Gaming is interesting. There's a, there's a great stat. It's from Statista. I was going to rattle this, this information off, but I'll make it very quick. There's roughly 7.8 billion people in the world. Out of the 7.8 billion people, there's like roughly, there's 3.1 billion people who are gamers. Excuse me, 3.22 billion people. Billion people. Billion people who are gamers. Gamers. Mobile devices mostly. And out of those, 63% of those gamers are hyper-casual gamers. So when we talk about the new narrative and moving forward, I think it's gaming. And I think Solana gets it. So Solana, I know this is a very Solana heavy video, more so than I have ever done before. But I mean, they are doing things. And like I talk about, the people that build in the bear will crush it in the bull. And as the tweet today or yesterday, I forgot, uh, they had a two-day Play GG event uh, in San Diego, the jewel venue. Streamers, G2, esports, talent developers, and gamers are gathered to celebrate and play 50 plus games built on Solana. Hold on. I don't know if they've actually, I think you can play them there. But when I took, the, took a peek at the link that they shared, they're not all playable. So just be aware about that. But there are some good stuff, like this, this one, Blade Right. I, I know people, some of them are we're not a bunch of gamers. But it looks pretty interesting. 
I don't know if this would be considered like a triple A ranked game. I don't think so, but um, you can download it right now and play it. You can play it on your computer. I don't think it is for mobile, but it's, you know, for uh, looks like it's for Mac and PC. So that's pretty good. And then on top of that, this one, Geno Pets, is available right now to play. So it's a Web3 game that you can actually play right now. It's a goofy little game, but what's pretty cool about this is that just like this app that I've been talking about quite a bit, Sweatcoin, where you download the app and they reward you sweat tokens for walking, coming to America September 12th. Right now it's only global, just not us and Iran for some reason. But GenoPets, the same thing, and you can uh, get paid in, the, in your steps. So I just did it right now, Apple or Google, and you can play it. And it's actually functional. Other ones, like this one, I don't know what this is, Earth from another sun. The game is in closed alpha, which means some of you can play it if you got a, some special pass. Star Atlas, one of their bigger games. Uh, I just watched uh, Crypto Stash's uh, interview with the uh, CEO and founder. They laid off like 100, I think it's like 100 some people, which is good. I hate to say that. Not good for the people that laid off, but it's good for the actual game itself because you got to trim the fat sometimes if you want to stay alive. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a crappy way to say it, but it is true. And uh, that's what's going on and hopefully they can make it, but you can't. You, also, it's some kind of closed alpha. I don't think it's actually playable. And the rest of the ones I didn't see were playable. So I could be wrong, but that's what we have. And then to finish up, I'll give a shout out to Neville uh, for making us aware that if you have the Voyager app, uh, you need to take off all your funds or the 35% that they graciously gave us after they made that 640 million uncollateralized loan of three arrows capital. Anyhow, if you have the app, make sure to take off whatever they give you before 11th of August, because they're going to shut it down. Okay. And then, uh, oh, we already talked about this. The narrative moving forward, I think, is is pretty good. Uh, but I don't think, I know people think I'm bearish right now, but I'm not super bearish. It's just right now in this time, it's just accumulation. Put your head down, get going, and then wait for the big the big roll on. But that's it for today. So look, whew, went 30 minutes. That was way too long. If you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. Everything to talk about is time sensitive. But right now, we'll go over uh, Q&A, answer the questions to my best of my abilities, and we'll go from there. If not, have a good day. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Show and go. Rob's buying Slender, I'm buying that.